brought you us under this house, Lord. We came in walking, Lord, this morning. We didn't come in a wheelchair. We didn't come in no crutches this morning. But we came walking in into the house this morning. And we're going to glorify your name. We're going to lift your name. We're going to worship you with our hands and with our feet this morning. With our mouth, with our voices this morning. Hallelujah. Praise him. The blood prevails. The blood of the bleeding lamb. Power to save. Just like the olden days, the blood prevails. No matter what the devil says, thank God the blood prevails. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. The blood of the bleeding lamb. Power to save. Just like the olden days, the blood prevails. No matter what the devil says. Thank God the blood prevails. Thank God this morning. Thank God for his cleansing blood. Thank God for his cleansing blood. Thank God for his cleansing blood that washes white as snow. Thank him this morning. Thank God. Hallelujah. I am a warrior. 
A Christian warrior, praise is my weapon in my right hand. I am a warrior, a Christian warrior, praise is my weapon in my right hand. Warrior, warrior. Christian warrior, praise is my weapon in my right hand. I am a warrior, a Christian warrior, praise is my weapon in my right hand. Warrior, It's going up, 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 it's going up. 
And the praises of the Lord is going up. When the saints, when the saints begin to pray, and the Lord will have his way. And the praises of the Lord is going it's up. It's coming down this morning. It's coming down, down, down. It's coming down. When the praises of the Lord is coming down. When the saints begin to pray, and the Lord will have his way. And the glory of the Lord is coming down. The glory of the Lord is coming down this the morning. The glory of the Hallelujah. Lord is coming down. Hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord is coming down. The Holy Ghost mountain moving just like a magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. Moving here, moving there, just like the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. It's moving here, moving there, just like the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. Welcome, 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 blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you, come with power and fill our temple, Holy Ghost, we welcome you, welcome, 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 blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you, come with victory lord jesus hallelujah all the glory belongs to you lord jesus because nobody can stand against you oh lord hallelujah nobody can stand against our king this morning lord jesus so we come against every power jesus, and every principality jesus. right now jesus hallelujah. and we break no down every stronghold right now prosper. jesus Hallelujah, because no we one said. can stand against our king this morning. The victory belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Who will stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Said, who can stand? Who will stand against the king? No one can, no one will. Oh, 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 the victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh. Victory belongs to him. So who will stand against the Lord this morning? Who will stand against the Lord? No one can and no one will. No one can. No one will. Who will stand against the king? 
Who can stand, who can stand against the king? No one can, no one will, no one will. So we put our trust in you. So we put our trust in you. And we put our hope in you. Yes, we put our hope in you. Because you're our provider. You're our provider. You will deliver. You will deliver. And I find my victory in you. And I find my Forever victorious, forever victorious, forever we win, forever we win. I find my victory, I find my victory in you. You're a provider, you're a provider. You will deliver, you will deliver, and I find my victory in Forever victorious, forever victorious, forever we win. I find my victory in you. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Yes, Lord. Victory belongs to Him. Victory belongs to Jesus. The victory belongs to Him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Yes, Lord. Victory Vic belongs yes, Lord Jesus. to Him. So we put our trust in you. So we put our trust in you. Yes, Lord. We put our hope in you. Yes, we put our hope in you. Victory belongs to Jesus, yes, Lord. Victory belongs to Him. The victory belongs to victory Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Victory belongs to Jesus, yes, Lord. Victory belongs to Him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. That's Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Lord Jesus. Jesus. Before we hand Hallelujah over to Pastor, Jesus. I just want to say that regardless of what your fight is this morning, that God is with you. You might not feel that he's there, but he is with you. And we know that the worship was our fight this morning, but all in all, we gave ourselves, we gave our worship unto God. And he Hallelujah, sees that. Jesus. He sees that. And it doesn't matter Hallelujah. what key it was in and what key it was supposed to be Hallelujah, in. Once Jesus. you give your all, you give your praise Hallelujah. to God, that is what he sees. And I know that Hallelujah. he is pleased this morning with your praise. Hallelujah. So we're going to hand over to Pastor this morning. We're going to hand over asking God to take charge, Hallelujah. to give his man servant, Lord Hallelujah. Jesus, to give him the strength, Lord Jesus, the conviction, Lord, to bring forth the word with power and authority, Lord Jesus. We pray that God is going to use our pastor this morning, Lord Jesus. We pray and ask God to use our pastor, Lord Jesus. Let your word go forth, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 There is anointing in this house. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but when I came in here, I know the challenges we've been facing. It means that the devil is trying his best against the people of God. But I thank God for the testimony that I have overcome by the blood of the Lamb. 
and the word of my testimony. I need some overcomers in the house of God. I need somebody to make some noise in the house of God. I need somebody to agree with me that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is Jesus that is in me than he the devil that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than the sicknesses I face. Greater is he that is in me than the problems I encounter. Greater is he that is in me than all the obstacles in my way because I've overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. Bless. Hallelujah. That, that, that was just trying to wake you up, warm you up. Hallelujah. You see... <clears throat> I am dependent, and I welcome those of you who are here. It was a struggle to be here, a struggle to start. Hallelujah. But I jump the message. Devil, don't fight devil. Hallelujah. Devil, don't bring down devil. Devil, don't attack devil. So if you're being attacked, if you have a struggle... If you're going through something, know and count yourself worthy, hallelujah, that I am a child of God and the devil does not like me and he's attacking me because I'm doing something good. Because I'm doing something good, hallelujah. Do you, do you really think that if you're all messed up and living in sin and, and, I, 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 and just didn't care about God, the devil will come behind you? No way, because you already have you. You already, when you turn your life to God, hallelujah. In fact, when God turn you around, when God turn you around, the devil hates that. He's trying to have his very best to overcome. Hallelujah, you. You see, when we were doing the devil's will, it seems like nothing was going wrong. I don't even want to talk about carnival and all them things. That, but when we were doing the devil's will, it seems like nothing could bad could happen. And if, if anything bad happened, we drink some daru, cuss out the person, deal with the co-worker, go to work and take a, a vacation or take a sick leave, and we come home and, and, we, and we just didn't care. But now we are changed by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now we are overcomers. And the things we used to do, we do them no more. Oh, let, me, let me rephrase that. The things we used to do, we supposed to do them no more. But you know, there always comes a time when, the, when you're not supposed to, to, to really do it, but hey, that devil right in your back hard, boy. And you say, Lord God, have mercy. A challenge on every side. Hallelujah. Um, welcome in. Uh, I don't know if I do it already, but those who are on Facebook, welcome. Or those who will view this uh, via YouTube, I greatly appreciate your likes and your comments. And uh, we are going straight into the Word of God. Yeah. We're going to Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. And I always say, if you can't find Genesis in your Bible, come to the altar. We will pray with you. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 20. I'm going to read a few verses and then we're going to preach. And I said, we are going to preach. Yes. Hallelujah. You know my style, more amen, no praise the Lord. Uh, 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 and everything, the shouting and the clapping and all that, I uh, 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 kind of cut it short. So now I'm going to preach long. Hallelujah. And Abraham journeyed and dwelt between Kadesh and Sur, Sur and Sojourn to in Gira. And Abraham said of, his, of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gera, sent and took Sarah. I, I want to tell you, Sarah had to be the most beautiful woman at that time. Hallelujah. Because kings wanted her. So, but God, somebody shout, but God, came to Abimelech in a dream by night. Hallelujah. 
came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. Hmm. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech, but Abimelech had not come near her or slept with her. And he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, he's speaking about Abraham, she is my sister. And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart. For I also withheld thee from sinning against all of me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man's wife. For he is a prophet. He is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee. And thou shall live. And if thou, if thou restore her not. Know thou that thou shalt surely die. Thou and all that are thine. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning. And called all his servants. And told all these things to their heirs. And the man was so afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, Why hast thou done unto us? What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee? That thou hast brought me and on my kingdom in great sin. Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sayest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they will slay me for my wife's sake, because she was a Miss Universe. And yet, indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, this is thy kindness which thou shalt show unto me at every place whether we shall come. Say of me, he is my brother. Bless the name of the Lord. When you go home, you can read the rest. Hallelujah. Father God, I pray that you minister to your man's servant, that your man's servant will minister to your people. Those via the internet, receive this in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen, shout amen, and take your seats. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul tells us, don't quench the Holy Spirit. In other words, don't stop the Holy Spirit. And what I understand by this, people come up with all the views and, and so on. You know, it does, it, what it does mean is, don't stop the Holy Spirit from working. Hallelujah. Because when you stop him, what you do, you put yourself in place of him. And if he's the boss, if he's the boss of the church of your life, how can you stop him? Because many people today have reached a point in their life that they are so filled, so filled that they believe that if God don't heal they could do the healing. Amen? And we see that happen all around the world. That preachers and pastors and apostles and the list goes on. That they are lifted. And when they are lifted, pride goes up with them. And the devil loves that. I am one of these preachers and pastors. When men and women of God fall, I try not to say anything about them. The reason being, it could happen to us. It could happen to any one of you. Yes, we are in the limelight. Yes, we are the ones at the forefront and people will know us. But we all have sin and come short of the glory of God. Are you listening? We all have sin. Some of us will say, 
That all does not include me. But the Bible said, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the scripture I'm re I've just read in Genesis chapter 20, Abraham is sojourning or going to different countries. God called him and he's going to different countries. And while he's going there, his wife is really beautiful. Because for a king or kings like other kings and people would see his wife and say, wow, that woman is beautiful. I need her to be my wife. So wherever he went, he said to her, he said, you know, they might kill me. And in order to escape that, just lie and tell them, here's my sister. What was, which was really a half truth. All right. But here it is. Read here. Abimelech was warned by a dream by Almighty God. A man who, as when you do your research, will realize that, or oh, Abraham thought that is a foreign nation and an ungodly nation. I need to let the saints of God, or remind the saints of God, don't prejudge people. Don't judge the book by its cover. Hallelujah. Read the people. Look at the people. Because at times we go to government offices and we see somebody, oh my God, they don't smile or anything and you're walking up and you're wondering, oh God, I'm going to have an encounter here with the devil. And when the person answers you, because they may look facially challenged, and you see them, and when they answer you, is the best person you ever came across. Hallelujah. We in our mind look because they might look kind of bulldogish. And you might say, hey, oh boy, don't set up in our mind. If they only give my attitude, I will fix them. Preach faster. Have you ever come across people like that? Or you yourself have done that. Hallelujah. So Abimelech is given a dream to warn him about what he's about to do. Of God in captivity, he gave them dreams. God will speak to people, save and unsave. And if God can speak to people unsave and save, so like would the devil give you dreams. You ever got a dream? Hallelujah. You ever get a dream and when you realize, Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You realize it is a, a dream that, how can I, it's meant to bring it on and one from God is to warn you because of his love. Are you still with me? So if God can give you a dream, the devil will give you a dream also. Hear this. Any of us ever get a dream and it bother us so much because it's not from God. You know it was from the devil. And you start to you get up, you're in fear, you're worried, you want to know what's going on, what's taking place. And let me just tell you this. On your phones, you might get little messages to go into stuff. And what they ask you, yet it have next and back and it have upset. If you need to go to next, you have to first fill out or answer accept. And if you don't answer accept, you can't go to next. When you get things from the devil, hear what I want to warn you. You just don't accept it. You tell him, no, I don't want a part of it. I don't want to even think about it. So you don't go to the next point in that. In that getting more frustrated, more worried, and the devil saying, yes, I have you where I want you. The only reason we are defeated is because we click accept what he has given us. Oh boy. The only reason we are defeated, the only reason we succumb to the enemy is because we accept what he gave us. But if I stand and I say I'm not taking that, I'm not accepting that, I am serving God, come what may, I will bless the name of the Lord. I refuse it. Somebody shout, I refuse it, devil. 
No, no, you forget the devil part. I refuse the devil and his plans right now. Hallelujah. Because he never stopped coming. So if you know that he never stopped coming, don't be flustered or worried when he comes. Just be prepared for when he comes. Say, I ain't taking that. I'm not taking that. And he will, you know, one thing I know about the enemy, when he can't get to you, he will attack the person closest to you. Hallelujah. And when, when he can't get the person closest to you, he attack your children, he attack your house, he attack your business, he attack your finances, he attacking everything because he want, the idea is to bring you down. But when you stand and having done all that you stand and you stand on the word of God and you stand on your testimony that God is a way maker, God is a door opener, God will bless me if I hold on, if I stay, if I, if I just keep Come in. God will make a way. Hallelujah. I, I read something on Facebook. Sister posted up. The blessing is not on those who left. The blessing is in those who stayed. And I thank God I stayed in Christ. I stayed on his word. I have stayed on his promises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so, so Abraham... Lie. And he tells Sarah, go and tell the king, he's my sister. And the king get a dream. He say, God, tell him in his dream, you would be a dead man if you had touched her. That's another man's wife. Another man's wife. No. No, today, that's something else. Yeah, brother Samson, that's something else. When, when, I, when they say, I'm married, they say, yeah, every car does have a spare tire, don't worry. Hallelujah. So, comes to Abraham, and he says, what are you doing to me, man? I put it in Pastor Mikey to him. What are you doing, man? How you can lie to me? How you, how, you, how you can lie to me? You nearly caused us to die. And... What you did is that God put a curse on all of a woman that they will be barren. So he said to Abraham, you lie to me. He's a liar. You deceive me. But hear what God says is a prophet. So you had to pray for me now. Yeah. Hallelujah. I, I, I mentioned... The law of first mention in the Bible some weeks ago. I say, when you see things first mentioned, first time in the Bible, it's called the law of first mention, and you need to pay attention to it. The first prophet in the Bible was Abraham, because God said he's a prophet. Hallelujah. So, so let me break it down. Let me break it down. So, I just lie to you. You find me out. Hallelujah. And then you say, well, pastor... He's a liar. But hear what? Pray for me. Let me tell you. I, I, I might tell you. Hold on. Leave it for next week. Let me go back and ready. Face God. Let me, let me go and apologize. Let me, but the man said, you know what? You lied to me, Abraham. You deceived me. But come, you have to pray for me. Because if you don't pray for me, all this curse will remain on my family. What I want to tell you today, what I want to say to you today, that a believer has a standing and a state. A believer, when you come to Christ, has a standing and a state. Now I look at the blank looks on her face, so I'll explain it. Your standing does not change. Your state will fluctuate from time to time. I'm going somewhere and I have your attention now. Because your standing is that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You receive that and you say God forgive me. And he comes into you. He, you are now his child. Whether you sin today, tomorrow and you sin forever. You are still his child. And he will treat you as a child. Not because you mess up. Yesterday, he said, oh boy, I don't own you anymore. He's still, you're still his child. So what it means by your standing 
is that you are a child of God. You are saved. You are sanctified. You are born for heaven. And that does not change. His promises are upon you. His word is in you. His spirit is in you. And that does not change. So, your state is your walk with God on a daily basis. One day you will come for church, come to the house of God, and nobody can discourage you. Nobody. They can look at you all out. They can say, well, why does she have to shout so much? Why you have to talk and all that? Stuff? And you just watch them and smile. Because your state in God is your walk with God. And that morning you get up and you say, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Nothing on this earth or in the heaven will keep me back from serving God. And then you come and you praise God. And you smile with everybody. And you're happy with everybody. And then tomorrow you go to your job and you want to cuss out the boss. Tomorrow you face your enemy and you're saying, God, where is all that joy you had yesterday in church? Because your state, your walk with God fluctuates. But what I love about all this, your standing is that you're hidden Christ. And nothing can take him out your ha his hands. Nothing in this world can take you out of his hands. And if I'm in God's hand, that means he's holding on to me. Whether I try to let go or not. Whether I am fluctuating or not. Whether I am falling or not. Whether I'm standing today and failing tomorrow. Nothing in this world will take me out his hands. Because I am a child. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Because a lot of us would say, I can imagine Abraham. You know when people confront us and say, yeah boy, you lie. And here where you tell the person, blah, 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 and you go on. And you get caught. You just feel like the earth could open you and swallow you. Let me tell you what. Abraham, I'll go back into the message, and I, I, could, I could feel how he's feeling, boy. But you cannot focus on your condition. You have to focus on your position. Hallelujah. Right out of. You cannot fo focus on your condition. Focus on your position. Because you are called by God to do His will. And sometimes your condition, you might fail, you might sin, you might mess up, just like everybody else. Oh, some preachers might not say this, but I will say it. What all these so-called big-time preachers are doing, what they are doing, the same thing you could do. Because you are a child of God. And they are child of God or children of God. And the anointing that is using them is the same anointing that is using us. The Holy Spirit that is in them is the same Holy Spirit in us. The only reason is that we probably are not tapped in as much as they are tapped in. The only reason we don't spend much time on our face as some people might spend. The only reason we might be disconnected and we might say, oh, we don't need all that. It depends upon you. Hallelujah. Your condition. Abraham was caught lying. His condition is a liar. And Abimelech king say, I catch your line, but you need to pray for me, prophet. Put your hands on me and pray. How, if it was you, caught line and in the same breath, say, pray for me, how you would have feel? What it tells me is that while I might be focused on my condition, God is not concerned too much about your condition. He's concerned about your position. Because when we do it, and whatever we do, we do unto God. And he is concerned about what you do for his name's sake. We are so caught up about living a life and saying, when I get it all together. 
When I could pray and pass like the pastor. When I could read the word every day. And I waited on that day when I could get, I could pray for two or three hours and I, I, I could talk eloquently and I don't have my verbs mixed up and I could read the Bible and don't spend all the time on Facebook and I could do this and God, let me just tell you, that's a lie from the pit of hell. You will really never get it together unless God gets you together. And right now your position in God is that you're a child of the most high God and you need to get up and move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham was he said, boy, Abim, let me leave that for next week now. When you know, when you know, you had to do something for God, you focus uh, and you're saying, yeah, boy, I go read the word. Nobody this morning again, me vexing uh, and I come in any house of God and nobody, uh, no bad drive, nobody, nobody. And I come in and you focus on God and God use you. Yeah, that all well and good. What are what you messing up? Or well, when you fall short and you're saying, God, how we could use somebody like me? Well, talk to the woman by the well. Uh, hallelujah. Talk to Peter. Talk to Paul. Talk to the others in the gospel because they were all messed up. Abraham was a liar. Noah was a drunk. Hallelujah. Paul was a murderer. Peter was a cusser. But here yeah, God used them because he was not too concerned about their character but he was concerned about their life for him hallelujah it is and this is not saying in any way and i declare here that you can live anyhow i can have a mess of character so i i can leave sister mary have two or three spanish and then come and just preach the word no now you all might not know that i did or say, well, well, pastor preaching, but God knows. And when I heard his sister say that sins have repercussions, sins have negative effects. Uh, hallelujah. And the truth will always be found out. And the truth is always come to light. Because next thing you see a Benny walking, sorry. Next thing you see a woman walking with a big belly and say, well, nine months ago, he was with me. That could be an embarrassment. But... But I have news for you. If I go to God and I say, God, forgive me, I mess up and I did this and I did that, does not that what that does that, that mean? I mess up, but I, re, I, I realize I mess up and I come and I turn around and now I say, God, I'm serving you. God will continue to use you because His anointing is upon your life. Don't quench the, don't quench the anointing of God. People, they, this is message that a lot of people may not understand because the first thing somebody might say well pastor god could use anybody and my answer is yes god could use anybody hallelujah so our standing is that we are serving a holy god and his holiness is in us our standing in the eyes of god we are perfect in the eyes of God. And we are working our way to perfection. Hallelujah. Our standing is that whatever promises he has given in his word, it belongs to us. But our state, our walk with God, up and down, up and down. It's like a uh, Ferris wheel, they call them. Roller coaster. Roller coaster. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? Your anointing is not on your condition, but your position. Hallelujah. Your anointing flows through your obedience. Your anointing, the anointing on your life flows through your obedience with God. But a lot of us have offense. Things that remind us who we are and what we have done. Earlier part of my life, I was always in church, living in church. And uh, 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 we had a little crew of young fellas, children listen. And the crew was that they could go to the grocery store and come out with stuff without paying for it. So Mr. Big, the big chocolate Mr. Big, now came out on the shelf. And we decided we could go by McFarlane supermarket 
push it down our pants, Makila, and come out the grocery. Not knowing that the grocery owner has been has, has his eye on us a long time. So the, this was my night. This was my turn to walk in, pull Mr. Big Chocolate Bar off, and push it down in my pants and throw my jersey over it. As I did that, I felt a hand grab me. And every lane in that grocery, the man hold him and say, watch him. Pow, cloud. Every cloud raised me off the ground and dropped me back. And I'm feeling bad. I'm crying. Every lane, everybody watching. What made it worse is that Pastor Habib, who was then my Sunday school teacher, was Ella Habib. The last lane who I can see is Ella Habib and his wife looking like... Ah, boy. The next, when I reach home, everybody take turn. It hit him with some lash, my brothers. And what, what, what they dislike about all that, they used to tip the neighbor foul. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the next day, Pastor Manic is passing, and, and my father said, church time. You could understand how I'm feeling. I now have all this offense that I did. All this thing to remind me. And to tell me, look, you was caught stealing at, at, at McFarland's grocery, and who can see her is your Sunday school teacher. Now I have to go now to church because when daddy say go to church, it ain't no belly hot to me. You have to be on the ground protein for you not to go to church. Michaela, <laughs> hallelujah. And long story short is that I had to face church. And when I say, mm -hmm, I mean, I feel like going... But father jump up and remind me, you should have known better. In other words, what you're trying to me, tell me is that know what you're doing is either you want to serve God or you want to serve the devil. I'm going to church, my head down, and what the lesson could be about the commandments, thou shall not steal, thou shall not covet. Us. And the one with the stealing it, man. Can I just tell you? When you are a believer, the devil will remind you of all you did. Or you could go and pray for she. She demon possessed you. And as you lay hand there, you know what's going on? The, the, she, the spirit in her go tell you all you did with this one. And what do you do there? And, and remind you. The devil will come and remind you. Oh, you can sing in church. And, and this happened. How oh, you could do this and your life in a mess. How oh, you could do this. And all these things happening. But I want to tell somebody, God is looking for someone he could use. And he could use anybody. And once you have a heart to serve God, my God, you can't sing, you can't preach, you can't read, you can't write. You, you, might not be, you might be educated, you may not be educated. But God is looking for somebody he could use. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul said, every time I try to do good, evil presents itself. And the good that I try to do, I end up not doing the good and I end up doing the wrong. The Apostle Paul. Holy Spirit that's moving this house. Bless the Lord. Devil, anybody ever get reminded by the devil? How much you do and what, why you can't say, why you can't sing, why you can't do that. He reminds you, but you need to tell him, hey, you're a liar. And the truth is not in you, it's in God. God is in concern because he already knows all that I will do and that I have done. And he still forgives me. And if he forgives me, then I am his child. And if I am his child, he will treat me like a child. I am going to go forward. I'm going to stand on his word. I'm going to pursue excellence. I'm going to be successful through the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, the greatest thing is about this. God called Abraham a prophet and he said, pray for the man. You know, the man come and say, you got to pray for me. A big liar, but you got to pray for me. We live a life and we don't want offense. We don't want nobody to tell us anything. 
You know what they call Jesus? A wine bibber? Clotness? In fact, when he went to his old family, young ladies, when he went to his old family, they say, who do you think you are? You ain't no Messiah. You're not the savior of the world. And, and people will come and tell us, but we praying for people and they're getting healed and your family ain't getting healed. You preaching gospel and others getting saved and your own family ain't getting saved. You preaching about blessings and everybody getting blessed and you still driving that old car. You think God is concerned about that? God is concerned about his will being done. And you can preach bro about brokenness and you broke. You can preach about pain and you in pain. You can preach about healing and somebody in your house need healing. But you got to do what God has called you to do. Abraham going to pray for the woman in Gira not to be barren. God close up the womb. But Abraham himself have a problem. His wife is barren. So if I'm a prophet of God, hallelujah, at least, let me pray for my wife first. You understand what I'm saying, right? At least the healing should come there. And that is what we, we approach God. That we, well, God, well, if I get it right, well, at least them all, my husband, my wife, and everybody gets saved. Let this one get saved. Let me chill and serve God. And you're waiting on that. And you're waiting. And you'll forever wait. What did tell Jesus? You, who do you think you are? Ah, hallelujah. Who do you think you are? You the Messiah? You this? You is that? They even come and they say your own brothers and say your own family. Jesus say my family and everybody that comes to me. But let me tell you, his brother became the bishop of Jerusalem. His mother was received the anointing on the day of Pentecost. We, people might come and say, but you serving God and this happening, and you serving God and, and so what? Hallelujah. I have a mandate from God to preach in season and out of season. I have a mandate from God to win souls at any cost. I have a mandate from God. I have the anointing of God to preach with, a, uh, with pain in my back, with pain in my knee, with pain in my head. But I have to do what God has called me to do because of my position in God. I am I am a child of God. I am a warrior, a Christian warrior. Uh, what, what, what it says? I am a warrior, a Christian warrior. Praise is my weapon in my right hand. Somebody needs to declare, I am a warrior. I am a Christian warrior. Praise is my weapon in my right hand. And whatever the devil comes up with, I am overcome by the blood of the Lamb. I am a warrior. I am a fighter. Who goes, who comes? I am going to serve God. Joshua said, for me and my house, we will serve God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let nobody distract you. People always want to get it right. People always want to get it together before they do something for God. But let me just tell you, God does make you right. You can make yourself right. God does put you together. You can pull yourself together. Because all that we're doing, we still need him. Hallelujah. The, the, the great preachers of old, some of them could have never read and write. Some of them never had wealth and riches. But hear what? One thing they knew is how to preach the word of God. One thing the greatest evangelists in the world was those who walked the streets and say, Jesus loves you. And we waiting for some degree, decree, we waiting for some degree, we waiting to go through the school of theology, all that well and good. But God is saying, I need you to stop waiting and start counting that I can use anybody and I want to use you. Yes. Mr. Makeda, God wants to use you. Brother Jerry, um, Ricardo, God wants to use you. Malachi who can't even raise his head because he's sleepy. God will use you. Hallelujah. 
Abraham, how can that happen, boy? How, how, how can I, you know how much preachers have problems? Cancer, diabetes, the list goes on. And they still come and pray for other people. And they get healed, they get delivered. And you hear the testimony and they're saying, God, warn me, boy. Hallelujah. For years, I came with back problems and back pain in this church. It had one time, I sat right to the front there, and they introduced me to speak. And you know what happened? I can't feel my legs. I can't stand up. I can't even move. And I'm I praying that the person talk a little longer, knocking away at my legs. I can't feel nothing. And I'm saying, God, if you call me, and if you really anoint me, just give me the strength to go and preach. Just give me the movement. And as I start praying, God, just work. And I feel like fire in my bones. And I start walking up. And I start preaching. And probably I preach the best that day. Because the anointing of God, He is the one that does the work. It's not about me. Hallelujah. Character building and character building. I mean, building character. Yes, I agree with a good character. But while you might be building character and strength, I want to get it right. I want to reach there. I want to reach like Sister Maria. I want to reach there. God is saying, hey, what? Can you handle what Sister Maria is handling? My God. Take the risk. Take the risk. Hallelujah. The anointing of God will flow, but you need to take the risk. The man who had the, the talents, when God gave them talents, one and five and, and so on, the one with the one say, me and investing, I only have one. And you know what he was condemned for? Because of his fear and laziness. Because he said, well, what I go do with one? I go bury it and hide it. And God might give you one or two or something to do. But you're saying, but I'm not like pastor. And I'm not like Sister Mary. And I can't do that. And I, but God has given you. Let me break this down. Because I might be doing something and the devil challenging me in different areas. And you might do something and you might be saying, well, I want to preach like pastor. And I want to do this and I want to sing like Maria and so on. But can you handle what we are going through? But what I learned through life is that you, while you take the risk and the devil coming against you, your thing might be different from my thing. But the whole idea is that all these things working for the good, that they that trust God and believe his word, that God will turn it around. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, when you don't take the risk, you become what we call fearful and you have a critical spirit. Because found young ladies, found people, find people. Found people, find people. You get that? I will say it one more time. F O U N D, that means you're found. God found you. Found people, find. F I N D, find people. And we need to learn that. Hallelujah. The, the, the point is, I'm getting at if we continually live in fear, we will never accomplish. If we are, don't challenge ourselves to take some risk in life, we will never succeed to where God has called us. So you fail your driving test. Now look on this side. And you say, I ain't and I said, no, no, I ain't never driving again. You know what you do? You bring fear to control you and you say, I'm never going out there. And when I ask people why they don't drive and so on, they say, you see the road, how bad it is. I don't, hello? You, you go on the plane, you don't see the pilot, but you believe in that the pilot controlling the plane. You have to trust God and say, I'm stepping out of the sphere because if I remain in the sphere, but God, I can't talk, I can't do this, I can't do that. Take the risk. Tell somebody next to you, take the risk. 
I challenge my children all the time to push yourself. Take the risk. Go out there. Get some things done. Research. Oh my God. Because when you live in fear, you'll become a critical person with a critical spirit. Who do they think they are? Why she can't do it? She can't read. He can't do this. They can't they can talk. Why well, ain't well, well, that they talking about? They, gone, they win 10 souls to God. They pray for somebody and they get healed. And they do this and they do that. Why